everyone this is the theoretical doctor and welcome back to my channel it's been a long while since i've posted a video in the stpm biology semester 1 chapter 1 series hence for the subsequent videos that i'll be uploading will be on completing this series if you want flashcards on this topic and other videos do click the link below it is available on my pinterest and slides on this topic are available on my website links are in the description below in this video we will be continuing the subtopic of proteins and we will dive into the contribution of denaturation and renaturation of a protein structure as well as the classification of proteins according to its composition and structure. Denaturation of proteins. Denaturation is the loss of shape to denature. It is the loss of shape of the proteins usually affecting the 3D shape as it is a relatively unstable structure due to the presence of weak hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, and hydrophobic interaction. These weak bonds are the ones that controls the shape and it can be easily broken. Factors contributing to the denaturation of proteins. First, heat or radiation, such as high temperatures which are above optimum temperature. The heat or radiation will increase the kinetic energy of the molecules, and this increased kinetic energy causes the atoms of the protein to vibrate violently, causing the hydrogen and ionic bonds to break, hence causing denaturation. To denature the protein. Next is strong acids and alkalis. Acids will contribute to more hydrogen ions and alkalis or base bases will contribute to more hydroxide ions. So too high of a concentration of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions will break the ionic and hydrogen bonds of the protein molecule causing it to denature. Next is high salt concentration or heavy metals. And finally, organic solvents and detergents. These organic solvents and detergents will disrupt the hydrophobic interactions due to their inability to form bonds with non-polar groups. Renaturation of proteins to, you know, renature it again to how it was before. A denatured protein will sometimes spontaneously refold into its original structure provided the physical and chemical environment are restored to normal basically it can it can return to normal not that it would this occurs the renaturation it occurs if the denaturation does not occur beyond the critical stage so there is a limit and if let's say the critical stage the limit has been crossed hence the proteins are not able to go back to their original form. They're not able to renature. The functional structure of protein remains the same and normal biological activities can be carried out again. Composition and structure of proteins. So the proteins can be classified into composition, into their structures or according to their functions. If you were to classify the proteins according to their composition, it would be simple proteins and conjugated proteins. If you were to classify them according to their structures, it would be globular proteins and fibrous proteins. Classification according to composition, which would be simple proteins and conjugated proteins. Simple proteins consist only of amino acids and no other non-protein component. It's just purely amino acids. Examples would be albumins, globulins, histones, and scleroproteins albumins found in the egg and also serum albumin in the blood globulins are antibodies histones they are associated with dna and scleroproteins such as carotene conjugated proteins contain protein which are the amino acid and non-protein material this non-protein material are called the prosthetic group they play an important role in the functioning of the protein so simple proteins, only amino acids. Conjugated proteins, you have amino acid plus prosthetic group. Examples would be phosphate or phosphoproteins. It's a, an example would be the casein in milk. Carbohydrate, glycoproteins, lipid, uh, lip, lipoproteins found in the membrane. Heme for hemoproteins or hemoglobin. 
nucleic acid nucleoproteins such as the chromosomes and the ribosomes. Classification according to structures. Fibrous proteins are long parallel polypeptide chains. The polypeptide chains form helical structures or pleated sheets held by hydrogen bonds. Secondary structures, they are secondary structures, relatively stable structure and insoluble in water. There is repetitive regular sequence of amino acids such as the keratin, collagen, elastin, and fibroin. Globular proteins are coiled and folded into globular shape. So earlier we talked about fibrous, now we're talking about globular. Globular are tertiary structure. The hydrophobic side chains are found within the ball-like structures. Hydrophobic meaning they do not like water. Hydro water, phobic phobia. And the hydrophilic side chains are found on the surface interacting with water. Hydro water, philic meaning philia, love. They are irregular amino acid sequence. Examples would be hemoglobin, myoglobin, enzymes, and antibodies. This tertiary structure determines its metabolic functions. They are relatively unstable and usually soluble in water and is able to form a colloidal suspension. A simple explanation of colloidal suspension is when you mix oil and water. After a while, you'll see the oil floating at the top and the water at the bottom. Take note here that myoglobin is a tertiary structure but hemoglobin is a quaternary structure of protein check out my previous video on protein where i explain more about this moving on classification of proteins according to their functions you have the enzymatic proteins the structural proteins transport proteins hormonal proteins receptor proteins storage proteins and also contractile and motor proteins for enzymatic proteins they act as biological catalyst so all enzymes are protein catalysts essentially which functions to speed up the biochemical reactions each enzyme will have an active site to bind to a substrate which is then converted into a product meaning the enzyme and the substrate they combine together you get your product example would be the digestive enzyme amylase which catalyzes the hydrolysis of starch to maltose the breakdown of starch to maltose Next would be digestive enzyme lipase, which catalyzes the hydrolysis of fats to glycerol and fatty acids. In terms of structural proteins, they provide structure and support. Examples would be keratin in hair, collagen and elastin in um, animal connective tissues. Then you have the transport proteins. They transport oxygen, ions, or molecules across the membranes, and they're found in membranes. Examples would be the hemoglobin that transports oxygen from lungs to other parts of the body, and also the channel proteins and carrier proteins. They help to transport ions on molecules across the membrane. Hormonal proteins, which are important in coordination of the body activities of an organism. Examples would be insulin and glucagon. You'll learn more about this in semester 2. They are secreted by the pancreas to regulate the blood glucose level. Receptor proteins for the response of cell to a chemical stimuli. Storage proteins to, well, store the proteins. You have the ovalbumin, which is the main protein in the egg white for development of embryo. Casein, which stores the protein in milk for growth and development of baby mammals. Gluten, which stores protein in the seeds. Next, you have the contractile and motor proteins. Contractile and motor, just remember movement. Examples would be actin and myosin in muscles for muscle contraction to take place, which you will learn more about it in semester 2. You also have defensive proteins. Defensive, they act as defense barriers for protection against diseases. Examples would be the antibodies which are involved in recognition of antigens and also immune functions. You have the growth proteins. They control the growth and metabolism such as the growth hormone and the thyroxine. Homeostasis proteins whereby they function as buffers. They maintain the pH of the blood and tissue fluids at a normal level. They also regulate osmotic pressure of blood plasma. 
Examples would be amino acids, proteins, serum albumin, and globulins. If you've reached this point, thank you very much. Give this video a like if you found it helpful as it does help in reaching out to others as well. Do support my channel by pressing the subscribe button so I will know and it gives me motivation to continue producing content like this in the future. And finally, share this video to those who might find this helpful. See you in the next one!